Well, hi, good morning, and thank you for coming and spending some of your time watching me work on this radio. Uh, this radio has been off my bench for about six weeks while I waited for a new dial plate to arrive, and it has. And so today I'm going to try to change the dial plate with the new one that's in this package here. So, I uh, haven't done this kind of thing very often at all, certainly never done it on this radio, which is uh, a little unusual, this one. Um, just a couple things about it before I start. First of all, I haven't found any written instructions on how to do this, although the owner of it explained it to me quickly on the telephone, and I don't recall anything that he told me other than he made it sound like it was pretty easy to do. So, uh, so we're talking about the backing plate here with the print on it. Now there's something interesting about this plate. And uh, that is that, you see this light bulb sticking out here. Just the tail end of it. So it's a single light inside here. So you gotta wonder, well, what are you doing with a single light? Wouldn't that just cause a big, you know, bright spot here? And uh, the answer is no. I have a feeling the light is burned out and we've never seen it operate. Um, now if you look on this page here, it's the bottom, here's the dial, and look what it says, glowing beam indicator. So the idea is the light is shining through a slot and putting a slot light, a slot spotlight, if you like, uh, onto the uh, dial so you can see exactly where you're tuned. This must be some kind of... I don't know, would it be phenolic? Is that the right word for it? So let's open this up and find out if we got the right thing. Now, where can you get dial faces for old radios? And there is a company in the United States that makes these up. And uh, I have dealt with them quite a few times. I'm not promoting them here. I'm, I'm not associated with them in any way. I buy their products just like anybody would. And I'm just freely stating uh, my experience with them. My experience with them is like really 10 thumbs up. The dial glass that they've sent me, and maybe I bought five of them uh, over the years, have been perfect. They've been exactly right, and they've been made beautifully, and they can take a radio, which is a disaster, and turn it into a thing of beauty. Now, this one's a bit of a disaster. Look at that. Can, can you kind of, it looks like light reflecting, but it's not. It's actually wear and tear on the, uh, on the dial plate. So let's... So, oh yeah, and the name of the company. Radio Days. Radio Days. Days is spelled D-A-Z-E. And uh, I very much, if you're working on these radios and you got a dial plate and it's scratched up or, 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 or something, you, you know, there is hope. <laughs> there is a lot of hope with this company. So, thank God they exist. And uh, we'd all be wise to send them some money now and then so they can stay in business. Doesn't seem like the best way to do this. Oh, look at this, there's a rip thing here. <laughs> hey, that made it easy. damage this just getting it out of the packaging. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't want to stick it back in there. Well, people make unboxing uh, videos, so I'm making an untaping video here. Weather here today is not very nice. Gray sky, it's just raining outside a little bit. A couple damp cats came in my house a few minutes ago, looking depressed. It really seems like fall has hit here. Summer just disappeared. But, you know what, because it could warm up again, it can get sunny. There we go. What do we got in here? Oh my gosh, there it is. Look at that. Uh, the one I ordered here, I couldn't order exactly the correct one for here. 
This one was slightly different, so I think it has maybe different cities marked on it. Different stations out here. Like, yeah, see, this one has a Canadian station, CFCF. And there's another one, CKAC. I mean, these stations may not exist anymore. This is all American here. So this is the American version of it. Um, otherwise, it's perfectly identical. And we've got the uh, manufacturing number down here. Somehow this company got the original artwork, I believe, for uh, for these. And somehow they, they are able to do this. It's fantastic, isn't it? Okay, let's see if I can get it into the radio without damaging it. It does have a key at the top, which is great. Okay, now I do not want to damage this. So I'm going to put it away somewhere where I'm not going to do something to it like I just tripped on the wire here. <laughs> put it put it put it somewhere. Of course you know what'll happen. I'll put it somewhere. I won't remember where I put it. Okay, I'll put it right here. Can't forget this. It's right here. Perfect. So uh, the, the way that this radio tunes is quite unusual. This this is this is not a common thing. Look at all the stuff that's moving. This whole this whole bracket's going around material here is going around, which is a little bit surprising. I think that'd be fixed up against the radio somehow. If we look back here, you can see it's a very complicated mechanism here. Spring-loaded handle. Oops. Let me put it here. This is all a bit of a mystery to me going on with this. So these are preset tuning points. And you get close and then you push the plunger in and it'll center on these cone shaped things and there. The radio is now tuned to whatever station that might be. Who knows what it is. It would look like 590. It would look <laughs> it look like the strongest AM station here. Now there's this piece. I don't know what that does. This is just spinning free here. There's this thing. This looks like a tool or a screwdriver would go into the end of this. And somehow you can move these. You must be able to loosen them off and then some, somehow move them. Or these been factory in factory position. Uh, I don't know. It looks like you'd have to drive this to turn this. And then, does that somehow screw onto these things? No. So I don't know what the story is with these. I'm not too interested in sorting that out. Um, this is a, a, even more complicated. It has a little pin here. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me get a little pointer here. There's a little lever here. Don't know what that's about. Now on the back side, they have a counter a counterweight here. This is just a heavy block to balance the weight of this mechanism out to make it make it feel uh, make it feel nice. It's a gear-driven system. That's good. No string involved. That, that's pretty good. What's this wire here? What, what is this? There's a wire coming up here. And it's attaching... It almost looks like this is a... Uh, conductive material here. What what are they doing? There's a slider on here. Well this light isn't going anywhere. So the let's look at the diagram again. There's something funny going on here. So this, this glowing indicator 
This is for something different. This is for a different radio. This is for the Model 38C9. That's, that's not what's happening here. Model 38C7. Maybe this is this is the one here. Because here you have a glowing beam, and then you're going to turn the whole card is going to turn. The whole dial face is going to turn. This is going to sit in one position. So you're going to sweep around behind it. That's not what's happening here. That's not what's happening here. With here, we, we have a pointer. This side over here shows a pointer. Dial model 38C7. I can't remember now which radio we've got here. One of the greatest things I can remember is never to rely on my memory. C7. This is a C7. Pointer guy. Here it's just showing how to set the pointer. This diagram here, there's a little dot. There's a little dot. Right down in there. We fade it out a little bit. Because <clears throat> to get this dial plate off, the pointer's going to have to come off. Uh, a pointer may just pull off. It may just be very easy to get off. How else could it work? So this is all a solid piece here. This is as flimsy as it gets. It's getting some of its support by being in the cabinet, I guess. Being pushed up a bit too, toward the cabinet. Oh, it doesn't feel good at all. Back there. There's like a metal tangs. Yeah. So they have metal tangs holding this material on. That's a strange arrangement. Wait, I don't have the cabinet. I will never have the cabinet, so I, I can't can't say much more about that. So I see a couple screws here. These screws are hidden behind this. Almost suggesting this would have to come off before you go at these screws. And what would these screws do? The screws would release this piece. How's that going to help? If I remember right, the owner said it, it, things kind of pop off. So I have this inside beautiful gold colored piece. Then inside further, I can see a ring in there. I think I remember him mentioning there's a ring that snaps in and holds the card in place. And that's what that no doubt is inside there. So, so we, we, we pop, pop this part off. Is it loose? Doesn't feel loose. See little indents here. There's another one up here, one over here. No doubt there's a couple here and one at the bottom. Those things often are the uh, the grips, if you like. Um, you need to pull something beyond those, if you know what I'm saying. So this would be a pull off and snap on thing. I did look for written instructions, couldn't find any. Did I say that already? <laughs> which means I'm trying to figure this out on my own without doing any damage. There's no screws. Let's check something else here. If I take the capacitor back here, go and put it all the way, and look at the pointer and see where it is, there appears to be a dot kind of behind it. it should be a bit further to get very faint dot there. Now we'll go around the other way. Okay, now there's a dot there, and this is lined up right on top of it. And I, I think that's really what it's saying here in this diagram. Move pointer sixteenth of an inch to the left of the dot. Dial calibration. Now what, what, I have to read this more carefully because they're saying move the pointer independent of the capacitor or just tune the radio until it's here. I'm going to go away and read this stuff a little more carefully <clears throat> before I start doing things and regret it. I don't want to regret it in here. And, and let's look at this. Before I do that, what is this wire doing here? This must be on the schematic somewhere. <clears throat> Excuse me. It goes through a hole in this plate so it doesn't contact the plate, plate. And it definitely goes into this material that has... 
a slider on it. So it's almost as if the slider is going to make contact with these, but but it doesn't. It doesn't doesn't quite make contact. The spring loaded piece in here. You know, it's not really spring loaded. It's Ooh, what's going on there? I gotta find out more about this dial. What could that possibly be? How do they bring a wire up? And uh, have it energize the sliding surface. And then the sliding surface energizes that little spring part in there. <laughs> which would appear to just energize this whole thing. That's all grounded. Well, you know, if, if you, you, who are watching this video, you, you might be familiar with this radio and you're, you're yelling at your, at your uh, screen right now, Jim, 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 it's this, it's that. Well, your voice isn't coming through, so I'm still left here alone. This is interesting too. This seems to have a couple of natural spots. One is out like this. One's right there. It's just catching that clip. Is that clip supposed to push the contact in? No, I don't, I don't see it. So it pushes this. So what? So it pushes the... So what? That's really mysterious. so mysterious. That means it's also, if there isn't this, uh, if it's not this style of backlighting, then this light is trying to light the entire thing. I don't know. I, I gotta read up the material on this uh, and see if I can discover what uh, what is up because uh, I'm lost. I don't know. I don't want to make a mistake here. Copy time anyway. So I have not found any direct instructions on how to take the face off of this anywhere. And uh, I even looked for instructions on how to change the light here, because it looks like to change the light you must you must pull this all apart, which is pretty strange, really. Um, I, I guess that means you could change the light with the radio in the cabinet and just, you know, do it from the front here. See what my fingers are doing? That's what I'm tempted to do, pull this right off. It's probably what has to be done. Probably just have to pull this off. I just like some reassurance on that. The interesting thing I did learn is this automatic tuning system or semi-automatic tuning system they have comes with a tool that is thrust through the center here and it does something to help you move these. I don't know exactly what or how, but somehow it does. So you could you could move these tuning spots to where you want them. Probably in some cases just matching up with these station names, but you can put them anywhere you want it. Uh, I don't have the tool. Um, apparently, obviously the tool is missing with most of these radios, uh, as you could guess. Somebody knows how to make them. Um, I, I, something to do with an Allen key. Uh, so I don't think that's an issue for me anyway. I don't think I'm going to try to tune these. I don't think the owner would, would try to do that. I've always found anyway that this, you know, any kind of automatic tuning is generally a little off anyhow and you end up doing it by hand in the end anyway. So, um, so I'm left with just pulling this brass piece off. Okay, well, let's give that a little bit of a try. And, and how would I do that exactly? Try to hook it up here and pull on it. Let's use the uh, Swedish, it says Sweden, Swedish fish knife for this. I don't want to scratch the surface here either. Just to see if there's a little bit of give here first. Yeah, this is giving. 
bending this piece if I'm not careful. It'll be necessary to take this off. How else could this be put on other than just being popped on? I come in like this. I can't really scratch the glass. Oh, I don't like that. Maybe there's a gap somewhere. There's no gap. Hmm. So the, the glass is held in by this. I'm asking, I guess. So if you take this gold piece off, the glass is just going to fall out seems to me if that were the case the glass would be loose in here it's definitely not loose could, could it be it's, it's locked in by turning you turn it a bit it'll unlock could, could that be the case can you turn this can I get my fingers on it this is really a long shot I don't feel that it turns okay I don't know what I'm doing this is not my radio. Uh, I, 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 I can start forcing things, but I don't like that at all. I'm use my fingers here. It just doesn't feel like it's ready to come off at all. I'm pretty sure the owner got it off. So I may have to hear from him again on this. Oh, boy. Yeah, uh, damn, the last thing I want to do is do something stupid and have the owner of it tell me, well, I told you on the phone. <laughs> if I went ahead and did something. So I'm too nervous to proceed right now. I'm going to stop. What? What? Sorry, can you say that again? There's a big black ring around the outside. The yeah. tuning is attached to the tuning handle assembly. I'm looking at it, yeah. Yeah, it has to come off. Do you, so yeah, there, there's, I would, there, there, there's, I would, yeah, there, there's two screws holding it. Yeah, that's all that can take that black ring off with so those two I, screws. Yeah, so the, the knob is in the way. You don't take the knob you off. You have right? to. Now, there's a there's lot of uh, screws on the top of that um, uh, knob. tuning handle. Yeah. You, you have to take the tuning handle off. Okay. Okay. I'm doing this while while you're talking. Yeah, that's good. It's good. So I, I'm turning that brass screw thing. That's, uh, that's yeah, that's yeah. Good you're doing, you're right? gonna have to hold on to obviously the tuning base on that and uh, turn that off. Well, uh, that's not that's not happening. Oh wait a minute, maybe it is. Yeah, yeah, it's tight. So this is the knob that you grab. That's right, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, is it coming out of something? Or? It's, 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 uh, it's going to be, a, it, it turns out from what I remember, it turns out quite a ways. Yeah. Uh, it's many turns already. It doesn't seem to be coming out. Okay, uh, maybe you would have to push it in to lock it down. I, I'm not sure. I don't recall. I've only taken it off once. Okay, so let's let's leave that for now. Uh, so yeah. the, the, the two screws back there, I might be able to get them out without even taking the yeah. knob off. And then the black ring comes off. The black ring comes off. Yeah. Now, at the, now the glass and the gold ring will all come off it together. They don't, the, the glass won't fall out. I see, okay. Thank because you. there's a, yeah. there's an internal ring that holds the glass into that gold ring. Okay. So it, when it comes off, it'll all be one piece and you just need a small screwdriver to kind of work your way around. Yeah. And, and pop that gold plate off. Now, I don't recall if it has a, a, a left hand turn on the gold ring to pop that off like like you would push it down and twist it right to lock it on yeah it there's I a think it's too tight to do that there there is a slot in there that makes it look like you would rotate that brass ring yeah. a little bit and then it would unlock and come yeah, out very so, little bit but if you can yeah. try that and that don't work just use a little screwdriver like you're removing the top 
top of it, the, the thin tin can. Sure. You go around it, slowly pop that off. Okay. If it gets scratched or something, don't worry. I, I can redo it when it gets here. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and yeah, pop that off. The glass and everything will come off at one time. Okay. And once you do that, you, of course, you grab the base of the needle. You can pop it off the shaft. And inside that holds that um, dial face on, you'll notice a great big uh, a locking spring that goes around the hole. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. You yeah. just pull that out, and then your, your face plate is, is removable. Good. Now, at, at that point, it's going to expose the light bulb uh, that's in there. Have you done anything with that light bulb, or? Uh? Uh, I just had to work it or do metal around it a little bit to get a contact because it wasn't making any contact. So other than that, I just uh, I, I tighten up the, the uh, contact spring behind. Okay. Yeah, I can spot that. that. That's it. You can pull the the, the, light, the bulb in or out. Okay. Uh, now they, they, I have another question for you. I'm not sure you can answer yeah. this one. So there's a second wire coming up and attaching to this apparatus. That's it, right. Yeah, I have no idea what it's for. Yeah, it's very odd because it, it it's, looks like it's connecting to a, a sliding contact. For sure it is. There's yeah. a sliding contact. Yeah. You're not sure what that's all about. I don't know what that's about. I don't know either. Okay, okay, with your reassurance, I'm going to carry on here. Yeah. 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 That's, uh, that's what I would do. Is Well, I've done it before. Yeah, don't worry about the glass. That'll all come off at the same time. It's not going to fall out. Let, let's just talk, talk about the knob again. This is the knob you grab to tune the radio. Yeah. And in, in the top of the knob or the front of the knob is a brass slot with a hole in it. Right. And I understand that this radio came with a tool that you slide down through that hole. And then that, I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. Know. I read this. I read this. Oh, and then, yeah, okay. and then with that tool, you can adjust those cones that are positioned at different right. tuning spots. You have, so you don't have that tool, of course. And no, no, um, it's long gone. I bet. I understand, and you showed me that on one of your videos. Was you, you push the knob in onto one of those cones. That's right. You yeah. You can turn the dial to loosen them to adjust them. Right. You can turn the knob counterclockwise. I don't know about that. Yeah. Uh, let me try it. No, no, there, there, there's no connection between the uh, the knob. So, so I really. Well, if you if you turn the brass part with a slot in it, that that turns them. Well, turn. Yeah. It, it doesn't yeah, necessarily yeah, turn them. You know, I, I think I think there's more to it. I think you need that tool that goes down through the middle. Yeah. Okay. But that doesn't matter anyway. I don't think you're really going to be too concerned about any of that. Yeah. Uh, Offhand, so okay. No, um, I can do any of that. I, like I want to put it on the bench with the antenna on it when I get home and try and adjust those set those those cones. Well, you do, eh? Stations. Okay, yeah. okay. I'm gonna leave that so for I'll, you. But I'll kiss around with that when it gets home. But but you should look for some information about a tool that slides right. down in. And I heard somebody was commenting about taking an Allen key and fashioning it into the tool that's needed. Right. So I yeah, don't know anymore. That's what I that. probably would have done too if yeah. I got to get a good look at what kind of tool it is. Yeah, that's the thing. Well, maybe somewhere there's a picture or something. Yeah. But uh, I couldn't find any reference to it at all. Right. Okay. Okay. I think I think I can handle it. Yeah. Yeah. Again, <laughs> I don't know if that turns and slides off of there. If it's loose enough to do that, I don't recall. I had to end up popping it off with a small screwdriver yeah. around the bottom edge. Yeah. Okay. So, and, that worked fine, and again, all the glass, everything will come off to with it, and you pop it right back on again when you're done. Very good, Dave. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Okay, and in case, uh, you know, you who are watching this video now, I've hung my phone up, uh, in case you don't know who that was, that's obviously the owner of this radio, who has removed this once. So, uh, okay, with his instruction, i got to get this black black ring off okay that's what I gotta do okay let's see if I can get this off now it's a little screwdriver yeah I'll tell you like that all that fussing the other one loose too not particularly
it's the Swedish fish knife once again. Every shop needs a Swedish fish knife. dimples in it all the way around. Whoops. The dimples. That's got to be a got pop-on sort of deal. solid. I just see myself shattering this glass here. That's what I'm very concerned about. Which against that? I don't think that's a good idea. Well, let's try it. No. Can't get it. Be easy from here, isn't it? Just not getting the force in the right direction. some uh, areas, this area has been uh, worked on before right here. Boy, that's just bending. It's just bending. Okay, so good thing to do right now is stop, calm down, come back at this in a minute or two. Let my blood pressure go down. Okay, I've got another approach to try here. Let me find my high school hammer hanging here. Yes, I do. This is my high school hammer. If you grew up in Ontario here at the same time I did and you went to high school and you took machine shop, you have one of these. <laughs> yeah, I almost got mine done. Most of the guys never got their hammer done. I, the only thing I didn't get done was tap that and put a little cap on. It's nicely knurled. Isn't that a beauty? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to use this. We're going to try to tap this off. That's the idea. Tap it off. See if I can get any movement on it at all. You know what? I can do it like this. Screwdriver. 
driver doesn't move. You're just a little too close to me. Stand back a bit. Things may go flying. Probably striking a radio with a hammer is probably not the best idea in the world. I don't like it. Yeah. Tapping is being absorbed by movement of the whole radio here. Part. I'm not getting that uh, good feeling here. Let's try it right here. You know what? Part of the problem here is that. All I want to see is just a little movement. That's all I'm looking for. Did it move? <laughs> I don't think it's moving. Say work at it. All the warnings are going off in my head. <laughs> Stop what you're doing. It's on. You know what? I. I I have got it off. It's uh, it's warped here a little bit now, so it is moving. Oh, careful! Don't like the angle of that at all. The blade's gonna cut into the brass. Maybe now that's moving a bit, I can pry it. first time you do something like this, you, you just can't be cautious enough. Maybe in the end I'll, I'll laugh at myself and say, well, I, I was actually pretty easy. What were you all freaked out about? Freaked out about ruining somebody else's radio. Now Dave mentioned the bottom. I'm not sure there's anything special. Oh, I can't get in here. A lot of things too, uh, when you tap tap them like that, they move a certain amount. The harder you tap, the more they move. Very light taps can move it, but you can't see it moving because it's so little. But many, many, many light taps can get you where you want to go. That's the message there. Instead of one big whopper, <laughs> which maybe I'll resort to in the end. Yeah, that's not good. It just isn't really good. Go up here at the top, I get a good angle. This isn't so bad here. Get a bigger screwdriver. Many, many small taps. There's a little wedge point there. If I get a got a Tool in here might just help. This kind of funny shape thing here. Just look it right in there and go like this. Yeah, that did it. There it is. That's the magic. I found the magic. I found the magic. Come up here. Up here. Yep, it's doing it. It's going to come off. Drop it. 
limit to how far you can push that that way at the limit up here. Ooh, almost off, almost off. There. Da 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 da. Success has has occurred. Yeah, it's nothing but dimples. Just 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 probably just oh look, there's little locky things here. A little like a Oh, well, maybe that's something to do with. Ooh. Good, good. <laughs> well, you know, like you ruin a guy's dial. To get this dial off, this pointer has to come off. Now these can eat. Sometimes just pull out. They just pull out. They just pull, pull them outwards. It has to be the case because there's no other access here. This fancy, fancy pointer. I don't have to worry about damaging this. Wow. Really? I don't see any movement in it. Here, this is a good spot here. Don't bend it, Jen. Ah! Wow. Okay, so sometimes you can twist these. On the shaft they're on because they're just they're just you know hanging on with just spring kind of grip and that may loosen it. Can can we move this relative to this? Incidentally, this is just about perfectly lined up. Probably not a coincidence. Yeah, this is just perfectly lined up with this handle. Okay, small things fascinating me. Ring is uh, this ring is this metal. It's not coming off. Well, Dave said you pop out the retaining ring, which is probably split. Here it is. And pop out is right. Wow, that's pretty sprung in there. Now I could rip this away get a better look inside. Just before I commit to that, let's get this other over here. This feels more like cardboard. This is definitely not cardboard. It's perfect. Okay. So I have an option of ripping this to pieces. exactly what I want to do, but it would give me a look at what's in behind it here. Wow. Okay, back to trying to twist this a little bit. Wow, that's not interested in it just doesn't want to twist. So what can happen here is uh, it could be uh, two, two different types of metal uh, sitting in contact with each other. They've corroded a bit and they've gripped on, like they're locked on now. Uh, it can be overcome with a, you know additional pressure and force. And suddenly it will all come loose. I think I have to destroy this, get it off, and see what's in behind there. I think that's, you know, I, I can actually just fold this over once. I mean, that'll be ruined, but it doesn't really matter. No, it's not paper. It's that same. Okay, I'm looking in there. Is there. Sometimes there's a screw right in here, but I certainly don't see a screw holding this on. Let's take this out again. Surprisingly flexible material. I'm going to bend the pointer if I'm not careful here. There's nothing to see back there. Oh, son of a gun. There's just nothing back there. So this, this is laid right up into that shaft. And this, it, it just has to be a pressure fit. How else could they possibly do it? In the instructions for setting this, the, the 
first thing you got to do is, is set the pointer. Move pointer to left of dot. The idea is you can, you can move the pointer without moving the capacitor. For sure that's what they're suggesting here. Loosen the shaft coupling set screws. Oh my gosh, is there a whole shaft that, that, that comes out like this? If I loosen some set screws, the whole pointer will come out. Uh, can't imagine that. I'm not even sure what set screws they're talking about. Probably way back here. There's no way the pointer is involved with that. Uh, okay, more more prying. Uh, I'd like to, like to pry right under if I could. But what that guy? Can this guy get under there? No, no, no. Okay, I have some prying tools. stiff. Well, I have to go to the grocery store once again. This is one good pull here. It's just nothing. It just doesn't feel like it wants to give at all. And then once again, trying to turn it. Well, we got that far. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I think I'd rather go to the grocery store at this point. Okay, so I've given this lots more thought while I was eating my lunch. Uh, I decided I'm going to cut this away, remove it, and then I can probably see how this is mounted. Then I can make rational choices about how to get it off. Which, uh, okay, how am I going to cut this away? The jig is up. Oh, needs to cut it. Ah, it's brittle. I'm not getting it to break where I want it to break. I've ever done something like that before. Okay, now we can take a closer look at what's going on here. So there's a shaft here that's not moving. And, oh my god, I knocked my camera way up in the air there. Okay, you might have been looking at nothing there for a bit. Um, just put something back in there and try to pop this off. Not that. gap to get into. There we go. No, this isn't going to work, I don't think. One on each side. <laughs> oh man, this is just getting worse and worse here. 
Pe! <laughs> Use the old four finger technique. Yeah, just pressed on. It has a uh, shape here, so it so it goes in a certain way. And can't it can't slide like this. So good thing I didn't try to get it off. Good. Okay. Well, we're almost done. Great. I'm gonna stop now. For a bit, anyway. Okay, so we have another situation here. I pulled the light bulb out just to have a look at it, and lo and behold, it's red. So there's a number for this light bulb, it's something like 34-2184. That's the part number, the Philco part number. But what it really is, uh, that Philco part number refers there tells me that the current draw for the correct bulb, and this is the problem, may not be the correct bulb, the current draw is a quarter amp, 6.3 volts. So, my options. This bulb works. Put this in. Put this one in. Now, this bulb is a clear bulb, brand new 44, it's a number 44. It draws quarter amp, 6.3 volts. So, that's the right values. Another option is to try to fit in this LED light, which is made to replace uh, these miniature lights, only it's a screw in base. But the way they've done it here, I can probably screw it in. So what's what's better? Is this is this really a good idea, a red color? So I'm going to do some experimenting. So my plan here is to operate the radio and change light bulbs in order to get a real feel for it. I'm going to put this. I'm just going to hold this. This is not something I can put in and out over and over. It's, it's a quite a tight fit, so it's going in once. But I just hold it up like that. We'll take a look at it. My, my concern here is, with both of these bulbs, you're just going to see a bright spot here. And that's not very good. This one, I'm not sure what it'll do. Uh, it has a funny shaped piece on it here. So I, I think it tries not to cast the light straight out. It tries to cast it out the sides. Plus, this I think is a little bright, but of course it's LED, and I think we could expect it to, to remain the, to, to last to last a long, long time. Okay, so to do this, I have to have the speaker plugged into the radio, uh, or do I? You know what? I don't need to plug the speaker in. If I don't plug the speaker in, then most of the radio will... Uh, there won't be any high voltage in the radio. That's fine. We just want the light to operate. So that's actually better. So I won't, I won't put the speaker on it. He says thinking hard about that. Okay. Let's put the red one in to start with. And now I'm going to... When you're watching these videos, the light you see is not the light I see. Things look a lot different to me. And that's going to happen here too. So I'm going to want this to be lit for my benefit here. I'm going to pull this out and turn off the big light. That should do it. So this is, room is now kind of evening evening lighting. You can see my, my cameras have, have changed. Their uh, frame rate has gone down because it is a little bit dark in here. Okay, this is, I don't need this in my hand. I need that light bulb. What do I do with it? What, what, what? They all, they all got knocked over here somewhere. No, the light bulb is in. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, you see the light? It's just a, like a hot flash at the time. It really, really stands out on camera. But with my own eyes, uh, I, I can read all this quite fine. It's not, it's not gone totally white here. Um, but okay, that's that one. I'll try this is this is the clear one. It's probably even worse because now with no paint on it. that rotten shadow at the bottom, eh? This, this piece here from the shaft, shadowing it. 
So in the camera, the whole thing looks brighter than it is, and you have this huge area here. Well, to my eye, actually, it doesn't look all that bad, but it's definitely bright. This is definitely bright. Let me just flip on some bright lights here. You can see the camera has adjusted a lot. Wondering is what would what would this look like in a well lit room? Yeah, you would you could tell it was on. Funny that they didn't put some kind of a block or a barrier in here to try to stop the hot spot. Now let's try this guy. And of course, it's LED, so it's a bit of a different color. Well, that's interesting. The color of the light and the color of this thing has become green to my eye. It makes it makes the thing look green. Um, doesn't look any better. Still has a, a you know bright area here. Nothing nothing special about that. I don't like the color though. much light. That's a little more of an old radio look to it. I'm seeing striations or, or lines across here. I think it's probably from the bulb, the glass of the bulb. Let me turn this a little bit. What do they look like now? They look the same still. Oh my, I, mean, I think I rotated the bulb 180 degrees. So. Um, a little, little, little dull, like the bottom of it here doesn't appear to be lit at all under the lighting I'm using in my shop right now, which is pretty bright. But this would be typical of a room during the day, the way my room is lit now. So this is the, uh, you know, this is the best. And I'll bet you if I put a little tin foil cap on this then I can I can reduce that hot area there's nothing you can do about this down here it's just the shadow of the shaft here can't do much about that okay so if I was going to uh, do something to dull down the front of it one thing I could do here just really quickly just as an experiment is just just put some of this tape on it here block much light? Probably doesn't block much. Well, keeps the filament from... <clears throat> so now, so you can see the uh, shape of the cover I just put on, so you know, it's a lousy job, but it, it does take down the uh, the bright spot. So, you, know, you see in the camera, it looks pretty, pretty even. So I think if I put this white light bulb in and properly cover the top of it, we, we might have a good thing. Properly cover the top of it. I was doing some house painting yesterday, just painting white at the front of my house, and uh, I've just got the roller and brush uh, stored in bags because I'm going to continue painting uh, probably uh, tomorrow when the weather's better again. So I just went out and I dipped the light bulb in the paint very carefully, and I'm just going to hang it here and let it dry. And I think that might work. It might still let some light through, but take the edge off it. We'll see. We'll just let it sit there and dry. Great. Okay, let's give this a go. I'm sure if I just bump that too much, it's going to come right off.
shadow right in here. I can't see it on your <coughs> on the camera. And I'm pretty sure it's because I didn't really cover the entire bottom of the light. But it sure is opaque. You can't see any of that, I realize. get a notion anyway that there's something blocking the light here but well another dipping that's what it's gonna get and just like magic <coughs> excuse me it's the next morning it's now September 18th okay so this guy has sat all night got a nice cover of paint on him This is going to be the light. Here we are. Again, I wish I could show you this on video, but but the uh, video, you know, our eye is so capable of handling a huge range of light from very very low to extremely high, and you know, my my cameras can't keep up with that kind of thing at all. Okay, now we're going to try to pop this in. indentations all the way around it. Mm. How do you manage to get this? Just a wee bit too big. Oh boy. <laughs> right. <clears throat> well, you know, this just seemed like the simplest thing. But see how warped it is? Can you can you see that? It's just bowing right out here. And I haven't even got it pushed in all the way yet. Well, okay, <laughs> a couple options here. Uh, one is to try to expand this outwards a little bit. And the other one is to try to shrink this. Oh my gosh. Oh boy. Well, <laughs> sit here in silence. Yeah, I think, I'm, I think the coffee must be ready by now. Oh boy, what am I gonna do here? Uh, just in thinking about this for a little bit, expanding this out, uh, no, I don't think that can be done. <clears throat> so grinding down the outer edge here might be the, the only way. Let's take a look at this. Can you, can you see there's like a white area here and what's actually happened is there I, I don't know how this is made but you can see the plastic on the back is, is white and on the front it's a yellow color so I think it's two materials that have been placed together somehow I don't know and this inner yellow one is a slightly smaller diameter than the outer white sort of plastic backing if that's what we can call that so it could be the actual dimensional error is obvious right through here. You can see it. You can see it sticking out there. Now, if I just were to grind this down, sand it down, grind it down until the outer plastic matched the inner wheel, this thing would be perfect. Perfect fit perfectly. Huh. Okay. But I'm not going to do anything until I've had some coffee and think about this because uh, you know, grinding it down there's no grinding it back afterwards. 
Okay, so I've been thinking about how to grind down the outer edge and not get into trouble doing it. These feel the same. They are three. They're all threes. They don't feel the same. I think the best way is just going to be a very manual, straightforward way. I thought about get out the Dremel. Oh my god, no. <laughs> or uh, maybe uh, fix the Dremel in place and then bring this up against it. No, I didn't like any of those ideas. How soft is this? Well, this might take a while. I don't plan to rush it doing this. Do. Boy, yeah, well, it's going to take a long time. Okay, well, I've been doing this for, well, not that long. It seems like a long time. It really isn't. I'm going all the way around, but concentrating on that top part that appeared to have some excess material. Okay, I think it's just about time to check it out. Closer. Uh, I don't think it needs more ground off yet. Very close though. Okay, continue with the grinding. So, if there's something to what I was saying about the two, you know, the back plastic plate and then the front color piece, if that's how this has really been made, I've managed to grind down the back to match the front pretty close but not that notch. So the notch continues to have some you know, extra backing material there. Is that going to bump into the notch grabber here? And uh, that's a notch grabber. So I think I got the size good now. If I pop it in there, maybe I can see this. Yeah, let's try that. Stay there. chance here. Wow. It looks it looks like looks like I've got to get some of that out of there. Hmm. Probably the best way to do that would be with a, a file. And uh, we'll just file it out of there. Okay. That's what I'll do. Okay, here's what I'm doing. thinking about some of the things I just learned about uh, people living in this region thousands of years ago. Uh, and so I'm going to show you a map in a moment. 
and I'm not going to show you anything precise because I don't know precisely where this particular location is. But uh, I think it's pretty interesting what I've learned, a little bit surprising. So I've known all along that people have lived right in the area I'm in, like right here, for at least 5,000 years. Uh, part of the reason is the very excellent fishing that occurs at a location called the Narrows, where the lake I'm on, Lake Kuchiching, attaches to a much bigger lake called Lake Simcoe. People have been fishing at that narrowing area for at least 5,000 years. 5,000 years. People have been living right here. And the reason I'm thinking about this is because I started thinking about them making stone tools. If people lived with stone tools right up until they didn't need to anymore, in the case of this area, it was the introduction of metal tools coming from Europe. And I must point out too that uh, there was a lot of copper tool making here in North America. Again, going back maybe even 10,000 years. So I'm going to pop this map on. We're going to take a look at it just for a moment and uh, tell you something uh, a little bit interesting here. So let me pop it up on the screen. This is just Google Maps. So North America, so I'm talking about this area. I, I live right in here. Let's zoom in. Okay, so, so I live right here. This is the lake I live on. This is the larger lake down here, Lake Simcoe, and this is the Narrows area where I said people have been fishing for at least 5,000 years. And there's archaeological evidence of that here from this location. But, uh, a lot, you know, aside from fishing, if you're going to hunt, and there's a lot of hunting that can go on here for a deer and, and all kinds of stuff, you need, you need steel, you need steel, you need stone arrowheads. You need good arrowheads. You can't make arrowheads out of any old stone. You need very, very special stone, a glassy sort of stone. That stone occurs in an outcrop somewhere on this island here. This is called Manitoulin Island. This is the largest island in a freshwater lake. It's quite large. Somewhere here, I, I don't know where, I've been on this island quite a few times. I, I, somewhere, somewhere there is a location where there's an outcropping of rock um, that is perfect for making uh, stone tools. And uh, the archaeologists have studied this very carefully. It's been known about for, for quite a while. And let's turn on the... Uh, oh, I want to turn on the satellite image, this one here. Yeah. Um, this outcropping has been visited by people to make stone tools for at least, or since, 10,500 years ago. That's among the earliest archaeological sites, certainly in this area of North America. Uh, there's some older stuff maybe down in this area here. But I was shocked to learn this. This outcrop is so unique that people would travel hundreds of miles to come to this outcrop I don't know, once a year, who knows, collect stones or sit and make stone tools. And th this location, the stone tool debris is five feet deep. The people did this for thousands and thousands of years, coming to some location here. I don't know where exactly. There's a uh, small community here. Um, and I just think that's, that's interesting. 10,500 years ago, and people weren't just scraping by. They, they were making tools and living their lives. Who knows how far, how much further back it might go. And here's where I am down here. Uh, this area, be, because of this, this connection through here, uh, became a focal point. And this was a, a political center um, when the Europeans first arrived, around 1600. Uh, a few Europeans trickled into this area. And there was something like, who's to say for sure, maybe 75,000 people living living down in this area here. I won't, I won't go into this any further, but the story is, is very, very interesting and much different than the Hollywood versions of things that we might have in our head about uh, about this stuff. Okay, back, back to what I'm doing on my bench here. Yeah, just to be a little more descriptive, picture an area the size of a couple of football fields with a rock outcropping, a white rock outcropping. 
and around it for a number of other football fields is stone debris from people taking rocks and banging them and then shaping them down to the shape they want and all the shards that come off they just drop on the ground and they leave them there five feet deep of shards from thousands of years of people sitting there fasten, fastening their uh, their really nice uh, arrowheads and spearheads and things like that knives cutters scrapers okay we're gonna try this the, the reason I'm so hesitant about putting this in is that once it goes in I really don't want to try to take it out so if something goes wrong you know then I have to take it out I don't I don't want to do that how, how do you even get it in gonna go good so the grinding has worked there it goes Fantastic. oh no <laughs> tell me the hole's not big enough okay wait a minute this has to go over this way a little bit Well, do do we have does this have to sink down on the hole? Oh boy. <laughs> just just when you think you got the whole thing worked out. It's just a wee bit off center. Looks like the hole is big enough, but it's a little bit off center push it on if I push it on it's going to put stress into this material and maybe warp it and maybe not warp it today but maybe over time it'll warp it and then if it warped enough and I, I'm not saying it would but if it warped enough it would start banging into the the pointer and I'll be able to become visually obvious also that it's warped so I can just leave it like that why would I bother forcing it why, why would I bother? No, what about, okay, so the notch thing has worked out fine. Good. It's good. I think it's good. Oh, we got to turn the light on. Take a look. we got to turn the light on. Okay, let's just... Oh, oh, switch cameras here. Okay, now, no speaker plugged in, but that's okay. Here we go. Wow, that's pretty all in here and I got a fair bit of light in here oh it's getting a little brighter in terms of the casting of the light it's fantastic it's, it's really worked out great I, 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 even in the camera it looks pretty good I don't really see a hot spot here so much anymore yeah it's a little dark down here you know you're getting that far away from the light bulb but excellent so coating the top of that uh, light bulb has done the trick looks great let me dark, darken it down a bit here this will maybe not look as good let's take a look fantastic now in the camera you see a huge uh, bright spot here but but with my eyes not at all beautiful it's come out beautiful I like it okay that's great um, uh, to put the pointer back on so you know, I'm gonna stop here and post this video at this point um, what has to happen next is a proper alignment of the radio once the pointer's on and, and we, we can make use of the dial and all that kind of stuff. So great, great though, very happy. I didn't get into trouble. That's the main, <laughs> the main goal of this whole thing was don't mess it up. That was my main goal. Fantastic. Great. Thanks a lot for watching and uh, we'll do something a little more electronic tomorrow.